Why do I have cocoa feet on there? We have plant chores once again. I told you, get ready, cause I have things to do. <laughs> I mentioned in my last video when I was repotting some Hoyas that I need to repot my philodendron Dean McDowell. You will see why. It's not very difficult to conclude. It's because this plant has grown a bit and the pot is not necessarily too small but too short. He's trying to come out of the pot as one may see. First of all, this yellow leaf, we need to move it a bit. I'm going to cut that off, worry not. A bit heavy, but you can see he is definitely trying to crawl out of the pot, and that's not something that we support here on this channel. I'm going to try to repot him without, without too many casualties, is what I'm trying to say. Now, this is the first thing I want to do today and I'm just trying to put it, I have no idea if this is visible in the second frame. I have my second camera or my phone set up so you can actually see the repotting. So I, ha I have no idea what's happening there. I know he's taking up most of that frame. It's the big boy. First order of business is that, and if I have time and I will decide if this is too long of a video, if I have time, I will repot my verrucosums, which are in a box. I can show you that. They are in this prop box and they have been propagated from nodes. There are a couple of them. And I think they have definitely received too much of moisture. So we will take care of it. We will take take them out. Um, I think too much moisture and not enough light is what they have received. So we will take care of that. Hopefully today, uh, maybe not in this video, but hopefully today. It doesn't smell bad though. So, Philodendron Dean McDowell, aka the big boy here. This is a plant I received in October or November in 2021, and it was a two-leaf cutting. It has grown a lot since then, and this is not all the growth. I actually chopped it down towards the end of last year. I only kept two leaves for myself, and the rest of the propagations did nothing. They are in my prop box. I'm going to get to that, but the base of the plant has started to grow, which is not with me, it's with my friend. That's the story of that. I will go into details as to what happened with propagations and some advice, perhaps, on propagating Dean McDowell. Another plant relevant to Dean McDowell is Philodendron gloriosum, and this is the second one that I have. I actually have two, I forgot, but this one is more relevant because it arrived at the same time, and... I want to say this one had ups and downs, but it was mostly downs with this plant. I think I recorded a video in the past how I struggled with this one because it didn't want to root. I got a cutting and it refused to root and eventually the leaves died back, so I was left with a stump. The stump was propagating for over six months. I'm not gonna lie until it pushed out some roots. But, you know, eventually we arrived to this place and it did have a couple of more leaves, but I did overwater it. And the roots didn't die back, but the leaves were definitely damaged. So you can see there, I did chop that leaf a bit because damage occurred. Both of them are in pond. This Gloriosum was recently repotted to this pot, and I thought this pot was a fantastic choice for it, but you know, it's okay. It's a self-watering pot, and I don't really use the self-watering function. We can see that there are roots there. Um, it's a self-watering pot I got from Amazon. I just wanna, I just wanna crap on this pot a bit. <laughs> so, stay with me for that. It's taped here. It's taped because I repotted this plant into this inner pot, and as, as soon as I put it in, the outer pot cracked. So, if you see this pot on Amazon, it's around 20 euros, I believe. Um, stay away from it. Do not recommend. I'm gonna try to find the link, but if I don't, just <laughs> look for something similar. It's around 20 euros. Absolutely do not recommend. It cracked right away. Another reason why Philodendron Gloriosum is relevant for Dean McDowell is because this is one of the parents of Dean McDowell. I have a different Gloriosum. I need to get it from my tent. This is Philodendron Gloriosum, and I got it as Philodendron Gloriosum Zebra Pink Back. 
it has more prominent veins on the leaves. And this one is in Coco Peat and Perlite, and honestly, I would recommend this mix. It just seems to work a bit more or a bit better for me than Pawn. And both of these philodendrons, Dean McDowell and Gloriosum, were in semi-hydro, and when my Gloriosum was in semi-hydro, that's when it got overwatered. I followed all the rules, and it just didn't love that. Dean McDowell did not really have any issues with Pawn or with semi-hydro, so I'm going to transfer it to Pawn, but Gloriosum, I don't know, I don't think he loves it that much. You can see that this philodendron Gloriosum doesn't have as prominent veining. Both of them are kind of similar when it comes to that, but maybe this one has a bit more prominent veining. As it gets larger, there is a bigger difference because I have seen the adult plant. My friend has the adult plant. Now maybe it's not as prominent in the video. But anyways, I'm going to put both of these aside. All three of these plants grow in my Mars Hydro grow tent, and they did really, really well. They are always on the lowest level because the light is a bit too strong. You know, the grow light is very strong, so I always put them somewhere on the bottom. And Dean McDowell has not been in the tent for a couple of weeks now, not because I don't want it to be, I just, I was rearranging and I took it out. And honestly, I kinda prefer it outside. It definitely likes the tent, but I don't like it in the tent because it takes up so much space. It's a huge plant. It grows really fast and just in three months or four months since I cut it, it grew three leaves. So I'm going to give it one final repot. It's not going to, I'm not gonna repot it anymore. Or if I do repot it in the future, I'm gonna cut it back. It's gonna go into this 60 centimeter pot that it's honestly not that much longer than the one it's in. It's currently in 40 centimeters long, so we are upping 20 centimeters. And I'm not gonna use it. It's a self-watering pot. I'm not gonna use self-watering function again. It's Aqua Toscana by Gelly. It's a German brand. I was surprised to find this here, but yeah, they make it in 60, 80, and 100 centimeters. So this is the smallest one they make. 100 centimeters is almost the length of my tent. My tent is 120 centimeters, so obviously we're not gonna go for that. I love you, but that's a lot of space to be taking up. So I decided to go with the 60 centimeter one, and you know, when it outgrows this pot, it will just have to be chopped. Back to the Philodendron Dean McDowell. It is a cross with Philodendron Pastazanum and Philodendron Gloriosum. It is a cross made by John Banta, and I believe it was made in the 80s, towards the end of 80s, maybe 87 or 88 or 89. I think it was 88. It was named after his friend, Dean McDowell. I believe his friend died from AIDS, if I remember correctly, so it was uh, named to honor his friend. I'm not sure if John, I think John Banta possibly recently passed away as well, unfortunately. Now, some background story on this plant. It's a beautiful, beautiful plant. It has qualities of both Bustazanum and Gloriosum. There are a lot of posts all the time in aerid groups, you know, if they have a Pastazanum or Dean McDowell. There are some uh, Gloriosum characteristics or qualities to this plant, like the reddish margin, uh, the petiole is different than Pastazanum, and then where, when it attaches to the back of the leaf, or where it attaches to the back of the leaf, that is different as well. Look for those qualities in your Plant if you suspect you have Dean McDowell. I'm not gonna go too much into that for several reasons because I'm not a philodendron expert, nor really plant expert. I'm just the person who grows plants. So anyways, what we will do is I will, I'm going to repot this plant into this other planter. I have no idea how I'm going to do this. I absolutely have no idea. It's too big. I'm going to cut off this leaf and that's about it. Um, that's what I plan to do. This pot comes with this plastic thing that can be removed. It's just, you know, to make the pot more sturdy, I suppose. If you have a plant you need to repot, grab it now. Grab something big. I know we all have that big plant we fear. We fear to repot it. It's a chore and you know it. But today is the day we face our fears and we repot our big plants. 
Considering the length of this video right now, I think we're only going to have time to repot this plant. I'm going to tip him out, or he's gonna tip himself out. I'm going to hold the plant. He is a bit wobbly. And I am going to reuse this pawn as well. Okay. I was gonna tell you, I did expect more. I did expect more things to come out. So, the thing I hate about these planters, they improved them, or they tried to improve them, but they glued the barrier on the bottom. How stupid. So, I'm going to try to take it out. If I break the pot, actually, I would rather break this pot because I'm so angry they glued the self-watering barrier, or whatever it's called, on the bottom. I just cannot believe someone would do something like this. Where was your brain? I did lay him flat. He's safely flat. This We're using this old leaf as a barrier between the pawn. If that gets damaged, no one cares, right? That's a smacking. I was smacking so hard, so I managed to partially unglue it, but only partially. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, see it's stuck here. Okay, let's try to, let's try to smack him one more time. I don't like to make noise. Yay. I unglued it. Holy! <laughs> well, so we have a. a you will see in the second frame. We have roots, is what I'm saying. I'm going to cut this plastic. I'm going to find a tool to cut this plastic. Let's see. Let's try to cut away this plastic. Oh, easy. One down, billion more pieces to go through. Sometimes I wish I did this live on YouTube so I can just ask you, can I cut the roots? Can I really cut the roots? Because this is going to be a hell. You know, Dean, I appreciate you in many ways. It seems you want to torture me. Don't really sure if this is a love-love relationship. I'm just gonna tell you that. So many roots. Like, I appreciate the effort, I really do. Love it that you are a healthy plant and that you root it so well. I just wish you would sometimes consider my feelings and how I'm going to do this. It just doesn't seem very considerate and I don't think I'm being heard here when I say not to do this. Okay, we're, we're, we are getting somewhere actually much faster than I imagined. I was expecting this to last forever. Obviously, we're gonna damage some of the roots. Don't be delusional. <laughs> what I'm seeing here is he did not have any intentions of being repotted. I do not know how he wanted to move to a different pot. Okay, most of the roots are really healthy, except the ones that I broke. Some of them, I do see a couple of rotten tips, but not, nothing too bad. I actually don't really even water him that much because I you know, suspected that these roots are going into the reservoir anyways. Most of them are entangled. We do have this one root that doesn't really know. He went down and up. He wasn't really sure where to go. So he went through one of these openings, found his way up, made this difficult for me. If only your children could see you now. By children, I mean propagations from Dean McDowell that don't really have roots. <laughs> so that story. So my Dean McDowell was in semi-hydro and I told you how in semi-hydro the top layer of Leica gets dry. So what I did, I put layer of rocks on top to keep the moisture in. And you know, top layer of Leica getting dry is an issue for several, several different reasons. You get mineral buildup there and also the roots may die in that top zone because it's, it's getting drier than the bottom. Anyways, the solution is to put rocks on top. The issue with crawlers is they aren't really gonna root into that and 
My Dean McDowell, while he was in that setup, was only rooted at the base. He was growing, he was crawling, but he wasn't really rooting. And I took cuttings from it in that state. I took the top cutting and I took several other cuttings. And the top cutting did root because the roots were most active. It doesn't matter what the top layer is, when you get new growth, you will get new fresh roots, aerial roots, and they are, they are going to be the most active. So that part rooted in water. The rest, I think four cuttings didn't root at all. One I think is now just rooting, but the rest of them are still not rooted. They have started to grow new leaves and the original leaves have died since, because obviously it's been six months. So if you are propagating crawlers, make sure that you have active roots. Um, you know, if you grow them in Lekka, consider putting something so you can activate the rest of the roots. See, I want to use some of this pawn. I don't think that's gonna be possible. I think what I really need to do is put pawn in this second pot and move him fast into it. I actually don't even think I can put, can you even fit? You can fit, nice. Okay. I wish I could fit him a bit more towards the back. That's not going to be easy, is it? I need to loosen up this back end, the butt, the butt. Um, so I can move him. I want this back to be really touching the back of the new pot, that, because that's gonna give us the most space. But now the propagations, you know, now it would be fine to take cuttings because all of them have rooted, obviously. The butt is holding its shape. Let's see if we can, if we can now place it in the pot. Okay, yeah, okay. Ooh, wow. We've gained so much space, excellent. No idea if you can see that. I have no idea if I can see that. What I need to do is fill the rest of this with pawn. Now this pawn has some roots in it, not a lie. I'm just going to pick out the longest roots. Whatever is in there is in there. So I'm gonna reuse it. And the dead roots, well, honestly, I already probably have some broken roots anyways in the pot, so okay, let me just put it that way. The issue is you, you kind of have to, well, maybe I don't have to hold it. Don't fall out. We need more pawn. You can probably see the granulation on this pawn. I have those bigger chunks that I mentioned in my previous video, so this is 8 to 11. So not all the pieces are the same size. I have smaller pumice that is 4 to 8 millimeters and 8 to 11. I have lava rock and zeolite. Honestly, the only question I have is am I going to have enough pawn? Now, in order to get to this other side, I will need to move the entire pot around. And he's gonna fall. Oh no, 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 no. Okay. We're good. We're good. We're good. <sighs> it's a task, people. Also, when you're repotting crawlers, make sure not to bury the stem. If it's a bit, you know, buried, that's fine. But you don't want to cover it. Have I considered how difficult this pot is going to be to move? No. It's not light. But I imagine anything this size would be heavy. Okay, I'm gonna cut the old leaf, if I can find my scissors. Goodbye, you have served us well. And I really wish there was a way for me to, maybe like this, oh, okay. Oh, that worked out, interesting. So we repotted this philodendron, Dean McDowell. I need to clean up a lot of Okay, so it's been a couple of minutes, like 40, <laughs> since I repotted my philodendron. He took a shower, he's nice and clean. I already have something I don't like about this pot and I'm gonna tell you all about it. First of all, I'm gonna show you the plant and he's a bit wobbly. There he is in, in his magnificence. In, you can see he is not small. 
And he is definitely going to fill out the pot. I was able to actually get the thing across, the plastic across, and it doesn't even interfere with the growth. I will need to put something to hold him up. You can see he's wobbling here. What I don't like about this pot, it has this reservoir here, and you're supposed to fill it there in that hole. I'm not really sure if you can see. It's a black thing here. <laughs> it's heavy. So you're supposed to fill it there, and the way this goes, it has like a chamber inside, and once you overflow it, the water will start to go out. But unless you overflow it, unless you fill up the reservoir, the water is not going to go out. And that's a shame, because I cannot take this out, and I, as I said, I didn't, don't really want to have it in self-watering. It would be great if there was a way to release that water. I guess it's going to be fine, there isn't too much of it at all, but I just would prefer if there, there was none. What I forgot to tell you is a bit about the care. Generally, it's an easy care philodendron. He is prone to spider mites, not a stranger to the mite. They're not too difficult to get rid of, and the thing is, he grows so fast that it's not gonna be an issue. Like, you can chop off all, all the leaves if you wanted to. He is just gonna continue growing. He doesn't care. I expect him to fill out this pot by the end of summer. Fingers crossed, not before because I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't think I'm going to keep him in the tent for now. I might, I, if I rearrange some things, I might put him in the tent, but for the next couple of weeks, I think he's going to stay out of the tent. I honestly want to have a big Dean McDowell. I really do. I love it. I would really like giant leaves, but it's not a reality for me, at least, because of the space limitations. Now, I do have three propagations here. From Dean McDowell. They're babies. They're not supposed to be this small. They're absolutely tiny and I took cuttings in January I believe or just before. Only one has roots and I think it's this one. It started to develop roots. These two don't have roots. They pushed out leaves. I don't know how. So hopefully from the new growth the roots will come as well. But as I said this philodendron was in semi-hydro and on top of that pot I had rocks it didn't want to root into that. It did crawl, but it didn't push any roots in the mix. I suggest if you want to propagate crawlers, the easiest way is to have roots going into the potting mix. I don't really recommend cutting them without any active roots, especially on the old growth. That's going to be difficult to activate. I think these will live because they wouldn't be pushing out leaves. I just think it's going to take a bit more time for them to to grow, which is a shame because I think all of these could have been really nice small plants by now. I don't think it should take this long. I think they all could have had big leaves by now, maybe two or three. Who knows? You learn from your mistakes. Hopefully. Sometimes. <laughs> you should learn most of the time, but I know it doesn't go like that. Basically, I'm not cutting any crawlers now without any active roots. That is all for today. I would like to know, what are your thoughts on crawling philodendrons? Do you like them? Do you hate them? I liked them at first, and then I didn't like them, and I'm liking them now, but they take up space. Currently, I have three, four, five. Okay, Miro, that's not, that's enough. That's enough. Mental note, another mental note, stop it with the crawlers. <laughs> If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, leave the comment down below, and if you're not subscribed to the channel... Oh! <laughs> if you're not subscribed to the channel, I will eat my hair. <laughs> if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so, because first of all, it means a lot. Second of all, you will be subscribed. It's a lovely thing when we subscribe to channels. I do encourage you that when I do plant chores, you do them as well. And you can also write in the comments below what is the plant chore that you decided to do today, because I would like to know. Hopefully, you had an easier time than I did. It wasn't too difficult. It was actually much easier than I thought it would be. And you know what? Before I go, let's play a game. <laughs> How much time do you think Philodendron Dean McDowell will need to fill out this pot? There's about one third, maybe one half of the pot left. You can see there. How much time? I, I say, let's see, let's have realistic expectations. We don't want to put pressure on him. I say four months. What do you say?
That is really all for today. Once again, have a lovely weekend and I will see you soon. Goodbye! I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. One anonymous patron, Adelise, Betsy Pegonia, Bonnie Harris, Carrie, Cynthia Taylor, Danube Daniels, Estelle, Farah, Houseplant Heather, Hoya Heather, Jacques Plant Journey, I do think last time I said Jack, so sorry for that. Kelso, Kristen Sherwood, Mars B, Martina, Alif Perday, Melissa Walker, Nicole Ferranti, Nicole and Caleb of Schlieff Tropical, Speed J, Plants by Misha, Rachel Colette Conroy, Robin L. Jennings, Sherry Kumar, Stephanie H2, Spinach Geek, Tanya, TJWO, Vicky Dingler, Wojtetaka, Twenty, Wendy Foreman, and Zlokov Nipponi. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons. AMP, Angelina Farnan, Brana Phillips, Catherine G, Kilone, Claudia L, David Condia, Jerry's Garden, Lisa Helling, Lori Murphy, Morgan Kennedy, Nella, Nerdy Kathy, Nikki, Plantelania, Ringlove, Ruby, and Shayla Mason Casper. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, Caroline Carey, Erin Keenan, Lauren M, Marissa, Ryan Lambert, and Tang Watanasriya Cool. Thank you so much for incredible support. I really do hope that you reported a big plant, the biggest plant that you have in your house. This is not the biggest plant, I do have to say so, but it is one of the ones that I have been postponing reporting for the longest time. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you very soon. Stay safe, stay well, and goodbye!